And please welcome our distinguished platform party, Sean Walker, University Faculty Marshal and Academic Senate Chair. Susan Schaubrun, Interim University Librarian. Harry Norman, Associate Vice President for International Programs and Dean, University Extended Education. Joseph Arnold, Dean, College of the Arts. Susan Cooper, Dean, Irvine Campus. David Bowman, Interim Dean, College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Raman Unikrishnan, Dean, College of Engineering and Computer Science. Cheryl Fontaine, Interim Dean, College of Humanities and Social Sciences. William Briggs, Dean, College of Communications. <laughs> Sherry McMahon, Dean, College of Health and Human Development, and Interim Associate Vice President for Research, Creative Activities, and Technology Transfer. <laughs> Anil Puri, Dean, Mahalo College of Business and Economics. Claire Cavallaro, Dean, College of Education. <laughs> Tanenson Osagura, Dean of Students. <laughs> Gregory Sachs, Vice President for University Advancement. <laughs> Amir Dabirian, Vice President, Information Technology and Chief Information Officer. Lori Gentles, Vice President for Human Resources, Diversity and Conclusion. Danny Kim, Vice President for Administration and Finance and Chief Financial Officer. Teresa Harvey, President, Alumni Association. Rahula Latif, ASI President. Jose Cruz, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Berenicia Johnson Eanes, Vice President for Student Affairs. Adam Day, California State University Trustee. Richard Davis, Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer, U.S. Bancor, and our keynote speaker. Mildred Garcia, President. Welcome to the California State University Fullerton Class of 2014 Commencement Ceremony. I'm Dr. Sean Walker, Professor of Biological Science and Chair of the Academic Senate, and today I'm serving as the Faculty Marshal. Please stand as the Cal State Fullerton ROTC Honor Guard proceeds with the presentation of the colors. Amanda Akin will then lead us in the singing of the national anthem, accompanied by the Cal State Fullerton Wind Orchestra, led by Mitch Fennell.
Please be seated. The California State University Fullerton 2014 commencement ceremony has begun. There are many special guests in the audience today. Go ahead. There you go. Good morning. There are many special guests in the audience today, and we extend our heartiest welcome to each and every one of you. On behalf of the university community, and the class of 2014, we thank you for joining us to celebrate, celebrate these graduates and their accomplishments. Each graduate will receive a certificate of recognition for participation at their college graduation ceremony where their individual name will be called. This certificate is signed by the dean of their respective college and the president of the university. At this time, I would like to invite the president of California State University Fullerton, Dr. Mildred Garcia, to the lectern. Good morning. Welcome to California State University's most important annual event and my favorite day of the year. Congratulations, class of 2014. You made it. You juggled family, work, school, and Starbucks. Learned new lessons and made all friends. Worked all day and you pulled all-nighters. And you may have lost your homework, but you found your way. And because you didn't turn back on your challenge, today you have reached one of your dreams, a university degree. That's right, you deserve it. But remember, you didn't get here alone. Look around you. You are surrounded by family, friends, and even fellow classmates who mentored you, supported you, and cheered for you to make this happen today. Now it is your time to cheer them for their support. Please join me in thanking them for all they did for you. In an email to campus earlier this week, I thanked our outstanding faculty and staff for a successful academic year and reminded them that a portion of every degree conferred here today is a direct result of the work they do. While I am sure that it was really nice to hear from the president, I can assure you it would be mean much more to them if they heard that from you. After all, you represent the physical manifestation of their life's work, 
and personify the excellence they strive for. Graduates, please join me in thanking the world-class faculty and staff of Cal State Fullerton. And while I have provided remarks at a variety of commencement ceremonies throughout my career, I know I can get better. How? By being direct and brief. With that, which brings me to three life lessons I want to leave with you today. Number one, keep learning. That's how I know I can and will become a better speaker, a better educator, a better president, a better person. We Titans are lifelong learners. And while your degree will certainly open doors, it is your job to fill your mind with what's on the other side. Do this long enough and the doors will grow bigger, wider, and reveal a breadth of knowledge beyond what you can even imagine today. Number two, give back. Just as you stood on the shoulders of others to get here today, as newly confirmed alum, your shoulders become the ones that others now use. Help them, support them, and teach them that Titans don't throw in the towel, they throw their graduation caps in the air. If each one of you mentor just one person to a college education, that represents so many more graduation caps sailing upwards and so many dreams realized. And number three, remember your alma mater, Cal State Fullerton. As you venture out into the world, I ask that you remain connected to Cal State Fullerton. Share with us the many milestones of your career and journey. And remember that no, no matter how far you go, you will always be a Titan. So graduates, go out and make us proud. Make a difference because Titans always reach higher. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce a newly appointed trustee of the California State University Board of Trustees and the Assistant Tribal Manager for the Sikwang Kumiyai Nation, CSU Trustee Adam Day. Thank you, President Garcia, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. On behalf of my fellow members of the California State University Board of Trustees, it is a true honor for me to be here with you today to witness and celebrate this wonderful accomplishment. First, I bring greetings and gratitude to all the parents, families, friends, and others who have supported today's graduates. Second, I offer our warmest congratulations to each of the members of the amazing class of 2014. Without exaggeration, Education is the most powerful tool we have in addressing social inequality and improving the lives in our world. Your Cal State Fullerton education, which has come primarily through the efforts of the extraordinary faculty and staff, has given you the tools to make a difference in your own lives and the lives of others. You know, there's a joke about an old man who, when asked for directions, replies, well, I wouldn't start from here. To the contrary, I can't think of a better place for you to start on what lies ahead than here, equipped with the education you have received at this incredible university. I look forward to seeing how each of you put this, puts this education to work in different fields, professions, and graduate programs. You are a talented and diverse group, and I am confident that you will make CSU proud. I want to thank all the members of the campus community for their work and understanding in helping you meet the challenges that you have faced during your years as students. Finally, aspire to use your time, talent, and treasure to give back. Give back to this university and to your wider communities. You as college graduates are among the most fortunate and you play a critical role in helping others. Again, on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees, I extend our sincerest congratulations to each and every one of you. Go Titans. Thank you, Trustee Day. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Berenicia Johnson Eanes, Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Eanes. Good morning. 
I'd like to share with you the words of Henry David Thoreau. If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. It is our great hope that we have given you everything you need as students of Cal State Fullerton to have those foundations to build your castles. You started here, you have no idea that you'd end up right here. But right now, in this moment, we are so proud of you. So proud of everything you've done. So proud of everything you will do. We know that only the best is yet to come. We know that you have everything within you to build your future, to build your dreams, and to be the leaders of tomorrow. It is our great pleasure as your community to work with you, to be with you from now and forever. We want you to understand that we love you as Titans and that every moment here will be a moment that will build the foundations of your life. Do not lose track with each other. These are the friends, faculty, staff, colleagues, people you will call on for life. Remember this moment and savor every excellent, fabulous, joyous, amazing, spontaneous moment. You have done wonderful. It is my great pleasure to introduce you, Ms. Teresa Harvey, the president of the Cal State, For Cal State University Fullerton Alumni Association, alumni of the College of Communications and College of the Arts, class of 1981. Good morning, Titans. On behalf of the California State University Fullerton Alumni Association, I welcome you this morning and send a special greeting as you join the ranks of Titan alumni. This past year, I've had the pleasure and honor of serving as the president of the Alumni Association. This organization representing more than 225,000 degree holding alumni, our organization works to promote you by providing programming and services to make you more professionally successful and to move your life forward after graduation. One of my greatest pleasures this past year has been getting to know many of those of you out there. The students graduating today are amazing. I wish I could have become acquainted with more of you because I am always amazed and inspired by your accomplishments. Being a Titan is more than a name. It's a powerful network. The connections made through programs and services offered by the Alumni Association can help launch you, connect you, and employ you. Did you know that the majority of the workforce in Orange County are graduates of Cal State Fullerton? Yes, these are your future employers, co-workers, and it's a great network for you to be a part of. I commend this class on your demonstration of leadership and your willingness to pay it forward through the reintroduction of the senior class gift. Congratulations. This legacy established by your vision will be enjoyed by future generations of Titans. In addition, I'd like to thank you for your support of the Alumni Association. More than one in four graduates sitting here today has made the investment in your future and the future of the university by joining the Alumni Association. This will provide you access to the Career Center as you get ready to launch your professional life, discounts at Titan Shop where you can show your pride and more. Take a moment and let your success soak in and then look ahead to your future. The relationships made while here at the university will indeed shape your future. Don't dismiss the benefits and turn your back on the investment that you've made. Graduation is not the end of your relationship with Cal State Fullerton. You've worked very hard to be sitting here today, but it's really just the beginning. You have the opportunity to be ambassadors, spokespersons, and advocates. The difference in the university that has given you so much can now be the difference you make. Consider investing in the future, whether it's attending sporting events, volunteering, serving as a mentor, supporting the arts, or making financial contributions. It all counts. 
Cal State has played a part in shaping you into who you are today. The faculty has helped guide your professional path and has challenged your way of thinking. Keep thinking big. Remember, Titans reach higher. Congratulations to each one of you. Thank you, Teresa. Good morning. One of the privileges of the Academic Senate Chair is I get to speak to all of you, and I, I can't be happier to do that, seeing so many wonderful people here and so many graduates of Cal State Fullerton. Um, Bilbo Baggins used to say, it's a dangerous business, Frodo, going out your door. You step onto the road, and if you don't keep, keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. You kept your feet. You walked the path all the way to graduation, and now you're going to begin an entire new journey. Along the way, you've had friends and family who've helped you, okay? Take a moment and give them a round of applause, I think, right? Thank your friends and family, okay? 20 years ago, this actually scares me, it was 20 years ago, I was sitting out there like you, and I graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry. Walter White wasn't my role model, um, but I found out a few things. I really liked teaching and I really liked doing research. I actually hate speaking in front of people. I was inspired by the faculty I worked with and have been extraordinarily fortunate to have been mentored and taught by so many who were so passionate about the most esoteric of subjects. Today, I, you know, get to do stuff with the Academic Senate. We make lots of videotapes of crickets having sex. Um, we try and figure out the private lives of crickets of Orange County, all sorts of things. But I get to work with passionate students, passionate faculty, and people are committed to teaching their research and making sure that the students get a fantastic education. And to me, I get to do exactly what I want to do. It's fantastic, okay? I get to work with students who work insane hours to pursue their dreams worked very hard after coming back from years of maybe doing something else, okay? Students who love to learn, students who inspire us to persevere and work to achieve great things. Ed Wilson, an entomologist from Harvard who studies ants, which there are probably a whole bunch of them underneath you right now, but um, you don't need to worry about it. He said, you're capable of more than you know. Choose a goal that seems right for you and strive to be the best, however hard the path. Aim high behave honorably, prepare to be alone at times, and to endure failure. Persist. The world needs all you can give. On behalf of the Academic Senate, the faculty of the California State University Fullerton, I'd like to thank you for spending your time at Cal State Fullerton learning with us, congratulate you on your achievements, and encourage you to celebrate those today. I look forward to what we'll see from you in the future. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Rahula Latif, President of the California State University Fullerton Associated Students. Thank you, everyone. Usually when you're wearing a robe in public, it means you've given up on the day. But I've been there, and unless I land a career in the next 16 hours, I might be there again Monday morning. But I digress. The reason why you're here is to celebrate an accomplishment. Now, we end this journey together, but the way it began for us was different for each of us. Mine started in Afghanistan. You see, I was born in a bathtub, and because my umbilical cord was cut the wrong way, nearly bled to death. In my formative years, I've seen villages being devastated by missiles, families mourning the loss of their loved ones, and so much death. I began to think it was a way of life. By the time my single mother brought me and my three sisters to the U.S., I thought I was ready for anything. Boy, was I wrong. Turns out, arriving right before 9-11 and not speaking a word of English makes you a pretty easy target, right? But there was one specific bully who I remember from middle school and high school who would constantly push me, shove me, humiliate me, and made sure to make my life a living hell. Over and over again, I would hear these words, Rahula, you can't, you can't, and you can't. A few weeks ago, I was at a liquor store. One morning, it wasn't, 
It wasn't any. It wasn't that type of morning. Wasn't wearing a robe. Just buying milk. And I heard a familiar voice behind me. Turned around and it was the voice of the bully. It was my bully. He recognized me and said, "Rahula, I've heard all about things you're doing. How are you doing?" Turns out he was also buying diapers and formulas and all the things. At that moment, my throat went dry. My body started shaking, and all the emotions from my past came back. He became the physical manifestation of all the adversity and hopelessness I'd ever faced in my life. I wanted to scream, I wanted to attack, I wanted to hit him. Instead, while I was paying for my groceries, I paid for his too. Literally, bought the man food and diaper for his children. Rahula, he said in dismay, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Turned around and I said, do you remember that one time you used to tell me that I can't do anything? He said, yeah. What about it? And with a big smile on my face, I turned around and I said, because I can. <laughs> Graduates, on your journey to this triumphant day, each of you have faced your own adversity, your own hopelessness, and your own bullies. But the very fact that you're here today tells me that you found a way and you persevered. You discovered that regardless of the obstacle before you, with the power of education and perseverance, you can. But make no mistake, as we venture out into the real world, more bullies are headed our way. They may not be in physical form, but they stand as obstacles to our dreams. But we are now lifelong titans in Cal State Fullerton, our alma mater. The largest and proudest CSU in the state, led by Dr. Garcia, has prepared us to not just face those adversaries, but to conquer them. To not just pursue our dreams, but to achieve them to not just find a job, but to build a career. And as graduates of this great institution, you are ready. And anyone that tells you you can is just plain wrong. I can, you can. We can take on the world, and we will. So Titans, let's get to it. Thank you. Thank you, Rahula. It is now my pleasure to ask Trustee Adam Day to come to the lectern to confer the honorary doctorate degree. Trustee Day. Thank you. Since awarding the first honorary degree in 1966 at California State University Fullerton, the Board of Trustees has awarded, on the recommendation of this university, only 16 honorary degrees. Today we present the 17th honorary degree to be presented at Cal State Fullerton. This award is reserved for those who have made significant contributions within their fields and in so doing have enriched our state, country, and the world. I would at this time like to ask President Garcia, Dean Anil Puri, and Mr. Richard Davis to join me at the lectern. I would like to now read the citation. Richard K. Davis, Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer of U.S. Bank Corp., the parent company of U.S. Bank, is a titan in the business and philanthropic community whose contributions have enriched the California State University, the state of California, and the nation. As an alumnus of the California State University Fullerton, he has served the university in immeasurable ways. He and his wife, Terry, contributed generously to the building campaign to help create a world-class home for the University's Mihalo College of Business and Economics. Through his advocacy, U.S. Bank has contributed significant time, talent, and resources to the university and provided instrumental support for the CSUF economic outlook and forecasts. As a professor for a day, he has provided our students a rare opportunity to meet an influential leader in the banking industry and learn about his academic and leadership journey. In recognition of his exemplary contributions to his alma mater, the university presented him with the Distinguished Alumni Award in 2008, the highest university honor bestowed upon alumni of Cal State Fullerton. As Chief Executive Officer of U.S. Bank Corp since December 2006 and President since 2004, he helms a company with more than $361 billion in total assets and businesses across the U.S., Canada, and Europe. He began his banking career as a teller at age 18, 
working his way through college to earn his bachelor's degree in business administration at Cal State Fullerton in 1983 before completing banking school programs at the University of Washington and Cornell University. For more than 36 years, he has been an influential force in the banking industry. His leadership and prudent approach to financial management garnered national and international praise for U.S. Bank Corp. His business and financial acumen is only one dimension of Mr. Davis's notable achievements. He is a committed civic and philanthropic leader serving on the boards of countless organizations. In recognition of his public service, he received the President's Lifetime Volunteer Service Award from President George W. Bush in 2007. In recognition of his extraordinary professional accomplishments, commitment to the university in higher education, the Board of Trustees of the California State University and California State University Fullerton are proud to confer upon Richard K. Davis the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. By the authority vested in me as trustee of the California State University Board of Trustees, I confer upon Richard Davis our highest honor, the honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, with all the rights, privileges, and honors it conveys. It is an ancient custom to invest those who receive academic degrees with hoods that designate the degree bestowed. I have asked President Garcia and Dean Puri to assist me in making this investiture. It is my pleasure once again to congratulate Dr. Davis. What an amazing titan. And he graduated from Cal State Fullerton. So in addition to all those wonderful things you heard from Trustee Day, I just want to add that it was a real pleasure to meet with Dr. Davis. When he and I were talking about coming here to speak, he immediately said yes, and he spoke about so passionately his days at Cal State Fullerton. And he said to me, Cal State Fullerton was my foundation. I owe everything to Cal State Fullerton. So without further ado, please give a titan welcome to Dr. Davis. Thank you, President Garcia, and good afternoon to everyone here. It's my indeed personal pleasure to be here. It was 31 years ago, almost to this day, that I graduated on the yard just behind the now music building. I had a two and a half year old son, a son on the way, a wife of four years, and eight years behind me. And as I think about that moment in time, I realize in looking back 31 years ago, that was halftime. So welcome to your halftime. You see graduations around the country all through this month Speakers will denounce that the world is now yours. You can now make a difference. Everything is possible. And those platitudes are correct, and they're right. But for you today, you've been doing those things already. You've been making a difference in the world. You've been changing the future that hasn't occurred yet. And you are committed to what you do in life and for whom you do it for. So after this morning's dedication, does anything really change? And I wondered that myself 31 years ago. The answer is yes. You don't change from yesterday to tomorrow, but the world sees you differently from this point forward. You see, all of a sudden, as a proud graduate of Cal State Fullerton, your voice will carry further. Your opinions will matter more. And your guidance will be valued by those who have yet to achieve what you've achieved here today. And while tomorrow is the first day of the rest of your life, Today, May 17th, 2014, is your halftime. Think about it. Halftime is this perfect moment. It's a time to pause, a time to reflect, and a time to commit. The deal here, though, is this. At your halftime, it's who and how you are today that informs your future. It is he or she who commits to believe in themselves the most from this day forward that will achieve the most from this amazing accomplishment. 
And so commitment on behalf of yourselves, for yourself. My few minutes is to be selfish and talk about you and how your life will change from this point forward. It's halftime. The clock is counting down. Three, two, one. Eh. Two teams, they both leave the court. They both go into the locker room with their coach with the intent to pause and reflect and commit. You see, they'll pause to decide what they've learned in the first half of the game. They'll decide where to make adjustments, and they'll think about how they've performed. The coach will then ask them to reflect on where they could do better, adjust to what's occurring with the other team, and then to commit to come back out and play even better in the second half with the intent to succeed. What's so great about halftime is every single halftime, both teams leave, one ahead, one behind, and they both come back expecting to win at the end. Now, Coach K from Duke University is one of the best, most prolific basketball coaches ever known. He has three parables I think make sense for today's graduation. One he says is imagination has a great deal to do with winning. You see, it's what you believe that's as important as what you do. And today, the family and friends behind you and your administrators and faculty in front of you hope very much that today is just a milestone for you to take all that you've learned to believe differently. Coach K said, whatever a leader does now sets up what he does later. And there's always a later. Remember that. There's always a later. Prepare yourself for the unexpected and celebrate it when it occurs because you were ready. And finally, he says, a big part of success is winning the moment. Today's May 17, 2014. I don't know how you got here, graduates. I know mine was an eight-year path. Yours might have been four, it might have been 20. But it's a moment in time that we celebrate for you. And representing your family and friends behind you, I think we might be more excited than you are. It's just possible. So let's use this halftime as a moment to celebrate and to pause. As you've heard the other speakers today, don't forget today. It's not just another day. It's a symbolic day of all the hard work. No, it's not. It's a symbolic day of your own belief in yourselves to be here on this lawn today in front of these people to be recognized for your fortitude. Let's reflect. Let's think about how you got here. Let's think about what we promised to do with this new education. Let's promise to make a difference in the world because we're now titans from Cal State Fullerton. And let's commit to a future shaped by our own belief in what's possible. You may or may not know the story of Roger Bannister. He's a Brit, and he ran the first four-minute mile on May 6, 1954, just a little more than 60 years ago today. The story isn't that interesting, but that he broke the world's record. What you may not know about this man is when he ran the race in the UK on a spring morning with no wind to his back, as he passed through the mile marker, all the other runners, like he, reached down to their knees to grab their breath. And within seconds at the end of the race, the other racers came over and started to congratulate him. To which he thought, I've beat these folks in other races. They've never been so kind. I wonder what's up. They started pointing up to the clock in the stadium, and it said three minutes, 59.7 seconds. To which he declared, well, clearly that's a mistake. Because you see, you may not know this, but before May 6, 1954, the world believed it was impossible for a human being to break the four-minute barrier. And here's a guy, least likely to do it, who did, and when he did, didn't believe it to be true. That's still not the story. What's super cool about this guy is unwittingly he broke a barrier. In the next 365 days around the globe, 30 other people broke the four-minute barrier. And in the next year, 309. So you see, when you believe it's possible, it starts to change what you can do. He unwittingly broke the record, but 339 people in the following couple of years believed it to be true and therefore did the very thing. So the way I see it, this is halftime. Quarter one, your wonder years. Quarter two, your college years. Halftime, today, right here, right now. Quarter three, the chance for you to evaluate what you really want to do for the rest of your life and promise us that you will take great care to pick what you want to do and love it 
do what you love, and be great at it. And quarter four, commit it, be amazing at it, and let it become the vocation for which you were raised, and let it be the moment for which you were practicing your entire life. Today is halftime. And so as I close, I want to tell you a brief story. I was a Southern California native for 35 years. Married my high school sweetheart from Glenn Wilson High School just over the hill. We moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota 12 years ago. OMG, you have no idea how cold it is in Minneapolis, Minnesota. <laughs> Neither did we. So picture this moment. We are first time empty nesters. Our last child has gone off to college, back to California, I might add. The telephone rings on a Saturday afternoon. Teresa picks up the phone, it's January, and this woman on the other end is Dr. Julie. Dr. Julie from the University of Minnesota, the Raptor Eagle Center. You know, Raptor, like big bird, ca ca. <laughs> Teresa's speaking with her on the phone. In that moment, I didn't know that Teresa and I were supporters of the Raptor Center, but I found out quickly, apparently, we were. Dr. Julie says, Teresa, would you and Richard, or your unnamed husband in her mind, would you be willing to drive to a place right now to join us to release an eagle, an injured eagle who's now ready to be released back into the wild? Would you like to do that? Teresa put the phone on hold for a moment, asked me if I'd like to. I was embarrassed that we had nothing else going on on a Saturday afternoon. Are you kidding me? And so we agreed to get in the car and meet her at the cliff of the St. Croix River, which means nothing to you except that it's really up high and it's already frozen. She says, call me as soon as you're in the car. I want to coordinate our arrival time to be exact. No problem. We got in the car. We rang her, said, we don't know where we're going, but based on the GPS, we're 20 minutes away. She says, perfect, we'll leave now. My husband will be driving. I'm thinking, whatever, just get here. We're driving along. She calls 10 minutes later, where are you now? I said, we're 10 minutes away. Five minutes later, where are you now? Five minutes away. I'm thinking, to, I said to Teresa, she's a control freak for sure, but I'm not exactly sure why she's so concerned about when we arrive. We arrived just moments before she did in this beautiful park, all under snow, on the edge of the cliff of the St. Croix River. It's probably 12 degrees. You don't even know, don't even, just cold. She drives up with her husband. Now, pause with me for a minute and think about what would you imagine a eagle, a full-grown eagle that's about to be released to the wild? How do you think it arrives? I'm thinking big van, big huge cage, awesome presentation. We will take the eagle and bring it to the cliff's edge. No, Dr. Julie is sitting in the right seat of a little blue Metro Geo little tiny car, and she has the eagle with her coat wrapped in her arms. And it has little tiny eyeglasses on like you have in a sun tan booth. Husband gets out, barely parks the car, she grabs the eagle and says to Teresa and I, let's run to the cliffs, run with me, run with me. Like run, Rapunzel, run. <laughs> and now I'm trying to get the idea that this eagle is about to take off and we want to do it over the cliff, not in the car. So she says, Richard, Teresa, who wants to release the eagle? I said, I do. So she said, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to take my arms and start to release her a bit. And I'm going to hand her to you. Do not let her go. No problem. I'm not going to let her go. Her talons, ladies and gentlemen, are bigger than anybody's hands here today. They're huge. And she has the little glasses on. She says, I'm going to hand you the eagle, and then keep the glasses, hold her tight. And then when I tell you I'm ready, you need to walk to the very edge of the cliff. In fact, Teresa, why don't you hold on to his belt loop? Now, this is the moment when your life flashes before you think, just how much do we love each other, and how does she really feel about me? <laughs> and as I reached up to the edge of the cliff, literally 150 feet high, I had the eagle in my arms, and then Dr. Julie said, I'm going to take off the glasses. The eagle will be ready to leave. At that moment, open your arms and let her go. She said, but do me one more favor. Count to 1,001, 1,002, and don't forget this moment. At the two-second mark, she will pause in midair, and then she will take off, and it will be the most remarkable thing you've seen. I said, whatever, whatever, just give me the eagle, let's get on with it. <laughs> Hands me the eagle, I make sure that Teresa's still feeling good about me. I take off the little glasses, the eagle starts to erupt, I open my arms, and now I know why we're at the edge of the cliff, because in order to get her wingspan, she needs to fall about 50 feet before she can hit her stride. 1,001, 1,002. And all of a sudden, she stops, like a cartoon character in midair. And then she takes off into the rest of her life. And so we're all done. I'm amazed at the moment. I'm thankful Teresa still likes me. 
I said, Dr. Julie, explain the two-second thing. She said, well, I forgot to tell you that she was a victim of gunshot or buckshot. She swallowed lead back in November from the hunters. She was dying. We brought her to the university, and we brought her back to life. But once she was healthy again, we needed to teach her how to fly again. And so the way you teach an eagle to fly is you tie their talon to, a, to a, the end of a tether, a rope, and you let them fly for 50 feet, and you bring them back. And they fly for 100 feet, and you bring them back. And eventually, they fly for 1,000 feet, and you bring them back. She says, guess how long it takes an eagle to fly 1,000 feet? Two seconds. She says, and when she gets to that moment, for the first time, she realized there is no tether. There's nothing holding her back. And then she will take off into the rest of her life. That was an OMG moment. I share it with you because tonight, today, we cut the tether. There is no tether. You're no longer still going to school. You're no longer working towards your degree. You have it. We now expect from you to take that into the rest of your life and make a remarkable difference in what you do with it. And so can you hear it? The clock is ticking down. Three, two, one. Eh. It's halftime. Can you hear the fans? They're calling for you. They're excited. It's the second half. Everyone expects to succeed. And those who succeed the most, measured by the moment of today, will be those who have done the most with their lives and reflected on the great institution called Cal State Fullerton that gave us all this amazing promise and hope. Ladies and gentlemen, it's halftime. Let's get back in the game. The rest of your life awaits. Break. Thank you. Let's once again thank Dr. Davis for those OMG inspiring remarks. I also would like to recognize that Teresa Davis is here in the audience. Please give her a titan welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are proud to call you both titans and thank you for your continued support of Cal State Fullerton and its fabulous students. It is now my pleasure to invite the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Jose Luis Cruz to the lectern. Provost Cruz. Every graduate here today has worked extremely hard and made enormous sacrifices, all with the goal of obtaining a brighter future. Today, you have achieved your goal. The strength of your character, your sense of purpose, and your commitment to society make all of us here today, family, friends, faculty, staff, and administrators, proud to have been part of your journey to success and confident that you will make a positive difference in the world. You now join over 225,000 Cal State Fullerton alumni. You are now vested with all the rights and responsibilities of a full-fledged Titan. This means that you should strive to be a lifelong learner, demonstrate to others the value and importance of education, and remember your alma mater. Congratulations to all of you on your achievements. Let's give a strong round of applause for our class of 2014 and the amazing future that awaits them. It is now time to recognize and perform the hooding of the first class of graduates in the Cal State Fullerton Doctorate in Nursing Practice Program. I will be performing the hooding ceremony today and will be accompanied by Dr. Sherry McMahon, Dean of the College of Health and Human Development. Please come forward.
Stacy Bauer. Anna Karchi. Miriam Butri Seifert. Raymond Gantioki. Lisa Evans. <laughs> Helen Sun. <laughs> Debbie Ranelli. Rachel McClanahan. Barbara Barlow Aron. Barbara Peterman. Lisa Whedon. Aaron Mendez. Sandra Forty. Becky Joe Ashlock. Jennifer Thompson. Hike Topajikian. Michael Dumashell Julie Margaret Wilson Doris Pineda Maniti Crystal Marie Harding. Cheryl Smith Pajun. Jill Cardusley. Sarah Elizabeth Gomez. Corey Varner. Alicia Ann Skibar.
Congratulations to all our graduates in the Cal State Fullerton Doctorate in Nursing Practice Program. It is now time to recognize those graduates that have earned their bachelor's degree with honors. Outstanding scholastic achievements at the baccalaureate level are recognized upon completion of degree requirements by the awarding of honors, the eligibility of which is explained in your program. In recognition of their scholastic excellence, all honors graduates are presented with a medallion with the seal of California State University Fullerton imprinted on it and the level of honors achieved is engraved on the reverse side. Although their names are annotated in the commencement program, I would like to recognize each group of honors graduates. Please hold your applause until all honors graduates have been recognized. Individuals graduating summa cum laude, wearing their medallions with blue ribbons, please stand and remain standing. Individuals graduating magna cum laude, wearing their medallions with orange ribbons, please stand and remain standing. Individuals graduating cum laude, wearing their medallions with white ribbons, please stand. Congratulations to all our honors graduates. Please be seated. Now is the time for which you all have been waiting. Will all doctorate graduates and candidates please stand? Will all master's graduates and candidates please stand? Will all baccalaureate, bachelor's degree candidates please stand? President Garcia, on behalf of the faculty of California State Fullerton, I am pleased and honored to present to you the graduates and candidates of the class of 2014 for the conferring of their degrees. It is that moment. Thank you, Dr. Cruz. Doctorate in the nursing practice program, graduates and candidates, master's graduates, and candor, candidates, bachelor graduates, and candidates. It is with great privilege and honor before valued family and friends, and upon the recommendation of the administration and teaching faculty of Cal State University Fullerton, and by the authority vested in me as president of the university by the CSU Board of Trustees to confirm upon all of you completing the requirements the degrees for which your name is listed in our commencement program, together with the rights, privileges, opportunities, and responsibilities to our society attached thereto. Your diplomas will stand as testimony to your possession of these degrees. And as a symbol of conferral of your degree, baccalaureate candidates may now move the tassel from the right side of their caps to the left. Congratulations, felicidades. Now go out and celebrate. Congratulations. The 2014 University Commencement Ceremony is now concluded. We ask that the audience remain seated as the platform party exits the stage. When the platform party is exited, please proceed to the location of your college commencement ceremony. Congratulations to our 2014 graduates and their families and friends attending today. We hope you enjoy your day on campus. The 2014 University Commencement Ceremony for California State University Fullerton is now concluded. Congratulations to all of you for reaching this significant milestone in your life.